Unashamed Nation, I want to thank you guys. This is Zach. Uh, so thankful for you guys getting behind the movie The Blind. Uh, so many people really heard about Jesus through this film. It was incredible. We exceeded all expectations at the box office, primarily because of your support. And I want to give you two more dates where you can watch this movie at home. On November 3rd, you'll be able to purchase it uh, for digital download on your on your uh, devices at home. And then on November 14th, DVD and Blu-ray will be available, which, by the way, you can get that right now pre-order on Amazon and Walmart or wherever you purchase your DVDs at. But November 3rd, digital. November 14th, DVD and Blu-ray. Thank you guys again for making this a success. We look forward to making the rest of this film a successful as well. Thank you, guys. I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Uh, I'm here at the Southern Lair yet again. Uh, at least in our super busy into our travel schedule, so this is kind of base of operations this week. Uh, but uh, Dad, I have to ask you because last week uh, Jersey Joe and Christine spent a few days with us down here at the Lair before we had to head out of town and uh, start our travel schedule. But I understand that uh, I helped Joe do some wedding notes because he was uh, doing the ceremony for his daughter. And so I got a text that everybody was so thrilled because you actually came to the wedding because you you don't you don't make a lot of weddings you're not really a wedding guy so uh, you went to a wedding Phil I I took a nap <laughs> oh, and boy. the women said Where's he Joe and he told me he said I'd really like for you to come to the wedding of my daughter and he said he he Al helped him with some stuff on uh, how to do these marriage ceremonies. Yep. And I said, eh, I don't know over there, you know. <laughs> I, I normally don't even go to weddings of my own family members. Yeah, which is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, so I said, so I just was took a nap and everybody left to go to the wedding. Well, I got up and I thought, well, I said, I wonder what time that wedding was. <laughs> So I don't know why this is funny. I get in my rig. <laughs> I don't nap. have an address to where the wedding is. <laughs> I mean, Louisiana's not a gigantic state, but, but you, you know, you have to know where you're going. Yeah. So I I, I go out by White's Fair Road. That so you have no idea where the the wedding. I have is. no idea. You don't have your cell phone. No, I don't have on a cell phone. Well, I know. I was just. So I I said he well, thought it was in Farmerville. So some had. You so you were driving around looking. So I go for to wedding a town venues. about thirty miles from Monroe, West Monroe, and I pull over to a filling station and ask somebody. I said, "There's a wedding taking place, and I think there was something about a." A wood road, a, a wood road. She said, wait a minute, can I have a picture of you? Oh, good, great. I said, well, no, I'm just trying to get this, to this to wedding. Find a so wedding. She's standing there. I'm standing there with a woman, you know, the filler station woman. They, she took a couple of snapshots, and she said, I got the police on the, on the, she said, they said, you need to go back to the, the de direction you came here. Mm-hmm. And they directed me to Sterlington. Really? So I'm driving along going so, to Sterlington. I got a question. How does the police know where old Jersey Joe's daughter's getting married? Because they just wanted to know the name of the road. Was there a road with wood in it? Oh, so they looked it up. Yeah, they looked it up and they said, yeah, it's right out here. And they pointed the way. So you were, you, how far I away? I took off and I drove to Sterlington. No. How far were you from Sterlington when you got this intel? Uh, about 10 miles. Oh, all right. Well. 10 or 12 miles. I'm pretty, su I'm pretty surprised you got when they got in the, in the general vicinity. So, so you've. So, so now I come you. come back, I, I say, I, I thought, that, that wedding's not here. <laughs> Of course, yeah. I'm looking for... You're looking for a wedding. I'm looking for a, a lot of cars or trucks parked yeah. in lines out in front of a kind of a church building looking thing. I said, maybe that's where it is. So I got back, came back the way I came, and I took off, and I went on into Farmerville. <laughs> I went north. I came out of the south <laughs> looking. I pulled yeah. in front of a... It was an old folks' home, but the cars were stacked up out there. 
Boy, I'd have, I'd have took off from there. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. out and looked around. They may keep you. In wheelchairs looking at me. And I said, what in the world? I said, it ain't a wedding. So I just kept on going. Well, I went north toward Junction City. That's in Arkansas. Said, well, let me just go a couple of miles out on each one of them. So I went from the south. I didn't see any cars stacked up. I, I, I went north, and I... Five miles, ten, no, time's clicking. Yeah. I finally get back in there. I said, you know what? I'm going to tell Jersey Joe. He said he'd appreciate it if I went to his daughter's wedding. He did the ceremonies. Yeah. He went to the courthouse, and it was they gave him the wherewithal to, to marry people. So I finally get on a road going toward Bernice. Yeah. So you were leaving now. I, I'm leaving. And I left Farmville. Yeah. I'm and then you left Starlington. I'm out there about 10 miles out of that town, uh, uh, Farmville, and I, I looked over there, cars, cars <laughs> lined up a little bit. I said, hmm, wait a minute here. So I took a hard left. I pulled back up in there, and I started looking on fence posts and whatever, because sometimes they'll put their names in, on the post. I, I said, what? So I, I looked at a post. It said, Welcome, wedding, Amanda, and somebody else. I said, What is the name of that one? That, his daughter. So now you found a wedding, but you don't, I don't know, know her right. name. Yeah. I mean, so I said, I said, I think Ugh. maybe this is a long shot, but somebody was just pulling in. I walked over there to them and I said, They knew me, but I'd I never seen them before. A lot life. of people know you, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, I walked over and I said, uh, uh, is there going to be a wedding here? And they said, yeah, you, 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 you're here. And I said, was the girl's name Amanda? She, they said, her name's Amanda. I said, I have found the wedding. <laughs> and I just eased up there and people were looking at me. And I got on the back row sitting there before Jersey. They, they got wind pretty up pretty quick. They you even made had, so you made it to the wedding? I made it to the wedding and had 10 minutes to spare. <laughs> well, that's one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard. I've never been led in a vehicle <laughs> like that. I said, well, what about this? And turn left. I, I just, I was guessing, but it was going yeah. through my mind. But I, I, I don't know. You talk about a. I was stunned. I was stunned. I have to say that this, the, the legend of your tracking skills just went up a whole nother because it must have been from all the years in the woods of tracking things down that you would just take off and really not know where you're going and find a wedding that's two parishes away from our parish. I mean, that's right. That's unbelievable. That's right. I was so shocked that when I finally did pull out and head for the house <laughs> after the wedding, Jersey Joe said that that means more to him than he said than anything I've ever done. He said, I'm glad you came. I said, well, he said, you pointed me in the right direction, you know. Yeah. He thanked me profusely. Well, he sees you. Showing up at the wedding. Miss K and them came. Here they are. <laughs> and they're looking at me. He's like, how in the world did you get here? I said, you so, wouldn't believe it if I told you, but yeah. I didn't have a map, so I was just kind of guessing. I'm trying to figure out why you went to Sterlington, and that had nothing to do with the wedding. Because the woman in the filling station, when I said, have you ever heard of her? No, I got it. But then, then, but that was wrong. So it wasn't in Sterlington. Wasn't in Sterlington. I just turned yeah. around and went back, went back on the road that hits <laughs> Highway 2 over there. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar. But I just, man, you talking about, what? it's almost like you had divine energy. Well, I had to because it's a needle in a haystack. Do you realize how many streets have the name Wood? Oh, in <laughs> I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Did the street have the the word wood in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for something that would said wood wood lane or whatever. Yeah, but that wasn't uh, it. But I just heard Kay talking. I said, well, isn't it out there? Don't it? It, it, wood lane is what they said it was, where it was. But no oh, man. It wasn't there. That wasn't yeah. it. I can't I believe you guessed. just pulled that off. You guessed and hit it. I guessed and I guessed and I guessed. And I finally just looked and saw the... I, and I turned around, and I, then I pulled back in and looked. I said, well, I said, Lord. If you get a cell phone, Phil, you could actually type in Wood Lane and see what came up. Do you mean get you one for Christmas? 
it's more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he doesn't do weddings. I guessed it going to the wedding. I made it to the wedding. You made it, so I guess well, why. Without an address. The reason I asked, because I didn't know the story, which is hilarious, but Joe sent me a text and said, ask your dad on the podcast about coming to the wedding. He said, it's one of the funniest things you'll ever hear. And he was correct. That was amazing. And I, like I said, it was divine intervention or your tracking skills that you would take off, launch into, I mean, you got to understand folks listening where dad's talking about is like 45 minutes to an hour away from where he lived. I haven't been there in a decade. Yeah. You were almost back where the movie was made. You were back in our old stomping ground. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Which is amazing. All right. Well, Jay's top that one. (laughs) No, there's no topping that. Uh, I'm just amazed that y'all always feels always talking about he's a, what do you say? I'm a low tech low man tech guy in a high tech world. In a high tech world, uh, it's friction there. That's that's that is. Yeah, I don't think we need as much as I'm watching go by. I think we're just hey, a little bit. You, I mean, I've you I got a few people, points. They, they start whole movements, you know, uh, just on one somebody running his mouth or something. And I, we're, we're most fortunate, I think, reading the Bible, and there's enough people there to make that, you know, okay. But yeah. I, I was shocked that the people on these cell phones, that many would would tune in. I was shocked. Well, it's because, look, Phil, you they can— They said I was you, non-woke. And, oh, and boy. Whatever that means. <laughs> Like you woke up, you slept over. Would that mean you're sleeping? I'm not sure why. Why that? Uh, I don't know why where that name. But Dad, came you did from. whatever. Whatever. Wake up is. They said this fool is not on. You it. did open that story with I was taking a nap, so that would make you non woke right there. So maybe that's what they're talking. About. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where the phrase come from. Do you? Al? No, I don't. I, I think it's. I, I assume that they mean that. They've been, people have been just sleeping through whatever, but now they're woke. You know, they've woken up to the way things are, to this kind of new way of living, which is, and that's on the. So we still have not woke up yet. Right. We're still sleeping. Because it said, sleeping. it actually said, there's a picture of me sitting there and and Dan showed to me and it says, it, it was uh, something about that, the, the movie they just made. And it was a hit, and they were talking about how could it be a hit if he if he hadn't woke up yet. He's not he's not woke. How'd he do it? How'd they do it? They they were amazed. Hmm. So here's the here's the uh, here's the definition according to Miriam Webster. Uh, it's aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues especially issues of racial and social justice. So that's, but I didn't that's reach what, what, that level according to the, 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 whoever wrote what he wrote. Yeah. He just said he, he, he hasn't woke or he's not, not woke. Oh yeah. Well, so is it a negative? Like you should be waking up or you should be more aware. I had the feeling that he didn't think, think I was on the, not, not. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. You say that about the movie because the, the, somebody he was shocked there was an audience for a non woke yeah picture. well that, and that's, that's what, what a was. lot of people told well, that, told me don't read the reviews but but look what the people think and you know Zach mentioned the Rotten Tomatoes which is ninety nine percent of the people that saw the film and and commented on it loved it and so but the apparently critics who are just people who watch a movie who don't know you or don't know anything about you. They said it was they didn't like it is what someone told me. I didn't I'm like Jace, I don't read the criticism, so I don't get a lot of that. Let's uh let's take our first break. So our friends at Tommy John Underwear say that there are two kinds of gifts in the world. You have oohs and you have ohs. And so we want to get some oohs. And Dad, I think you could add one to that because you said Miss Kay, when she saw you in a pair of Tommy John, added a wow. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's ooh and it's wow. Uh, or at least that was Dad's case uh, with Miss Kay. Uh, they have great underwear. 
Uh, I've been a huge Tommy John fan for a long time. In fact, they say they don't have customers, they have fanatics. Uh, and certainly that's what I've been for a while. Uh, they call it the softness season, uh, which is uh, loungewear, pajamas, as well as underwear. So there's a lot of things you can buy. Great for gifts. Um, as we get into the holiday season, uh, Tommy John products uh, have uh, comfort, softness for the colder months. Uh, they also have uh, great shipping. Get it right to you. They've got a best pair you'll ever wear. It's free, guaranteed, which means you have nothing to lose to try out their product. Here's what you do. Go to tobinjohn.com slash Phil. Right now for the holidays, you're going to get 20% off your first order. So that's great. 20% off, limited time, tommyjohn.com slash Phil. tommyjohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details. Well, I wouldn't have known what, I still don't know what the woke is, but the Dan from time to time just puts holds his cell phone in front of my face and I'm sitting there. Well, that's when you need to just cover your eyes <laughs> up and scream. Yeah. Well, Dad. Because now, I mean, what does it really mean? I, I don't. I'm looking at our culture, and if woke is what that is, that's not 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 healthy. Well, a lot of this your, right for your eternal life. Yeah, a lot of the racial stuff you're seeing kind of came out of this woke thing with the uh, systemic racism. I, those terms. There's just there's been a lot of new vocabulary. That people have just kind of made up, and supposedly that makes you. I'm not caught. I haven't caught up with it because I don't look at the cell phone. I don't have one, so I, 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 I somehow or another, I didn't sign up to to be like that. Right. I just point people, <laughs> people to Jesus. He removed our sin and is going to raise us from the dead for crying out loud. I'm thinking that's better than woke. Here's what. Here's your verse, Dad. Ephesians five fourteen. For it is light that makes everything visible. That's why it said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, that, that, that to me is what. <laughs> there you go. But, but to whoever wrote that article, they're like, no. Nah. Are you idiot? Well, you really follow it comes, Jesus? It comes back to your story. When you woke up, you yeah. then pulled off one of the greatest finds or adventures, I guess, that you could ever imagine. It happened. I'm very impressed. It well, happened. what happens is technology makes you, uh, it kind of enables you where you don't know. It's like now when people, they'll say, what is your phone number? Well, I don't know my phone number because in the phones, it's all by name. So when somebody calls me, I have a name there. And the reason, the benefit of that is if you don't know the person, well, you don't answer the phone. But if the name comes, like if Al called me right now, when I looked at my phone, it wouldn't be a number. It would say Al. So I would answer it. But the the problem with that is you don't know anybody's number. Right. So if I was in, if I got, you know, if I got kidnapped or whatever, and they, or, or let's say I wound up in jail, and they said, we'll give you one phone call. Well, I wouldn't be able to call anybody because <laughs> I don't know anybody's number. I don't have anybody's number. <laughs> Well, I don't my, either. Including my own. <laughs> well, I have hundred. Well, you don't you have said, a what, number. What number are you? I'm like, <laughs> we well, don't have a number. But I'm I saying, I only have names, but I don't have numbers. So I wouldn't be able to call anybody. Well, it's the same thing about traveling now. So what we do, the normal people feel, is we'll put in an address in our phone, and it the phone will direct you. And there's several sites that do this i mean my favorite is uh i think it's called Waze. yeah because they not only tell you where you're going look they 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 have a cartoon version of your travel and so you're looking at that and it you you're just staying on the line and and if a cop's coming up they'll say and and missy uh hers because she went with me to houston this past weekend for the mighty oaks and we can talk yeah, about, I want to hear that about another that. time. But uh she has a like a British voice. It's a male British voice. And I love it because it's like one mile ahead, turn right. <laughs> but it's very intense. Yeah, I'm not and, into that. No, I like it. I, Cause that way you I, I'm trying to figure out why. And then he'll say, police ahead. 
I mean, it, it's. I mean, it's drama. It's dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, don't you? Well, Missy, don't you want the Brits? The don't you want the Brits telling you what to do, Dad? Then we fight a revolution about that. Jace is back I'm in the colony. Oh, the wildest it. thing I've it. ever heard some I Brit telling you a turn here and turn with it. passion, Phil. It's like. <laughs> Well, that's well, what I needed the other day. I needed somebody sitting in the back <laughs> doing that. Well, what happened was, so when I we got in Missy's car, uh, you know, it, she didn't have the sound on because she just watches the cartoon, but I'm easily distracted, especially with my lovely wife. That's what I told her to get out of yeah. there. So if I'm said, not woke, I said, put the I'm voice not on. woke, what am I missing, Jason? <laughs> well, I was trying to make a point. Somebody said I wasn't woke. And I just figured out, well, what am I missing for not being? No, you're not missing anything. No, you're not missing. Well, you, I think now, well, I didn't know what it meant, but after reading. Well, I, I, don't, after I reading, don't have uh, the, the Middle Eastern cat. Who were you talking about saying, you know, they, they, they turn left here. <laughs> not Middle no, Eastern. He was He's from, a Brit. He was from Britain. <laughs> but yeah, that was Brit. just a voice. It was not an actual person. It was an artificial intelligent oh person. They call it AI. This was not an actual human being. They just, it was an artificial human being telling me a mile ahead of every turn, he would say, turn right in one mile. I mean, it was very intense. But what I was, my point was about the woke, Al, now that I heard the definition, you just need to say, if they say, are you woke? You need to say, I love everybody. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That took care I'm of that. commanded to love my neighbor. Yeah. Well, you've always done a good job of loving people, no matter where they're from or, yeah. or what they look like. or So, uh, but because people are saying that from based on that definition, I guess, Al, that there's powers that be that are alienating certain types of groups of people and injustice. Is right. And they're, and they're now waking up to this, but we're still all asleep. But I, I think we just say, yeah, we're woke, Ephesians 5, 14. You know, arise those sleep. Well, here's what I always say. Injustice happens. It, it happens. Yeah. It's not uh, if, it's when. Yeah, that's right. And Jesus himself, in an act of injustice, I think the greatest act of injustice in the history of the world, actually used that as God's plan to save all humans so, I mean, just think about it. No, that. you're right. Well, what happened to Jesus was an injustice because he's the only living adult who literally was flawless and perfect. Yeah. No, he was not guilty of any sin, and he was capitally punished for everyone else. Right. I mean, that, if, it, if it wasn't for that, and my knowledge of that, I would have a hard time with forgiveness. You know, we're going to get into forgiveness yeah. in Luke 17, right. but we're in Luke 16. I'll tell uh, my experience with Mighty Oaks next podcast. All right, good. Well, before we go to that text, one thing I will say, Jace, is that you talk about a time when everybody's going to be woke at the resurrection, when everybody wakes up. All injustice will be dealt with. So oh, <laughs> there, there is a day coming where justice will happen for everyone. So just hang on. Well, where's that? Uh, where's that text in Romans where it says uh, about it? It's mine to avenge. Because uh, uh, you know they have, there's a isn't there a movie? Isn't there a movie that's called Avengers? Yeah, it's the Avengers like or the uh, that's all the Captain. Captain America, uh, they're all the Avengers. So to your point, is that a woke movie because they're trying to aven avenge injustice? Or uh, yeah, am I missing that? No, nah, it could be. I mean, maybe, yeah. I've never I've never seen it. So. There's been several of them. Uh, they're like soup. Where's that? What verse was I looking for there? Yeah, that's the one. That's, that it's mine to avenge. That's the one he, uh, the burning coals on their head. Where is that? Uh, it's in Romans. Yeah, Romans twelve seventeen. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. There's a good verse. Phil. Yep. That's yeah. That's that's. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with every. Yeah. That, that, here's the verse. Right. So it's Romans twelve nineteen. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. 
I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. That's a quote from Proverbs 25. Hmm. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I think that's a very good uh, paragraph for our culture. Yeah. I don't think the woke crowd has awakened to that, right to what you just read. I think if they read that, based on the definition. Yeah. All injustice they, will be settled. Let me uh, put push that through. Uh, I will. I'm gonna make, let them let them know that that's we're gonna we're gonna get that out there, Jay. So uh, before we take a break, I've got two uh, events coming up this week. Uh, one is at the Bogey Hills Country Club in St. Charles, Missouri. It's for a group called the Vitae Foundation dot org. Is where you go to see about tickets. Bo- Bogey Hills. Bogey Hills Country oh, no. Club. I wonder why it's not birdie hit. Well, it must be not a lot of good golfers there, Jace. Is I was thinking the same. Get the story I, I on that. The same thing. That's on Thursday, October twenty sixth at six thirty. That's a fundraiser, uh, VitaeFoundation dot org. And then I'm, the next day, Friday, October twenty seventh at seven, I'm going to be at Camp Calvary in Macville, Kentucky, for a men's retreat. And that's kycampcalvary dot com. So check those out. I've met a lot of people that I'll talk about on the next podcast up in Minnesota that were listeners. So. Appreciate you guys coming out. We do events. Let's uh, let's take another break. So I guess growing up in a hunting family, I, you sometimes say you probably can take for granted just how much training uh, that you get on how to shoot, how to safely handle a weapon. Um, and we were trained from when we were very young. You, even the movie shows that we had a desire to want to go and hunt and learn how to use a weapon. So, but I don't remember there was, wasn't a class on it, right? There was no class. We just learned it, right? Dad just taught us how to take care of a weapon. Yeah. No, I was just going to say exactly. It was, uh, you know, part of our lifestyle, which is you just learned how to take care of all your equipment. I mean, that was kind of one of the rules. We didn't have many, but but you always took you care. You could see it when we had visitors who would shoot over your head. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, we just had to pretty well have a little lecture every time we got in the blind. And one of the things, Dad, you taught us as well is you have to, your weapon has to be clean, uh, both to be safe and also that you can use it that's uh, right. effectively and efficiently. And so that's uh, what our friends at Barrel Buddy have built their business on. It's a 3D polymer. Uh, that goes through your barrel to be able to make sure that uh, there's no residue in there, you don't have anything dangerous, and it keeps it clean and it keeps it working. So we love these guys. Great company. Uh, Tis the season of hunting, so be sure and make sure your weapons are clean and ready. And to do that, go to BarrelBuddy.com, B-A-R-R-E-L Buddy.com, and check out uh, their great product. Welcome back. Uh, we're getting to Luke, um, the end of Luke 16 and verse 19. And I guess to set that back up, Jace, we, we had talked about uh, there was a parable about serving money or serving God is what kind of got the, mm-hmm. that chapter started. And so I, I said, well, and, and just using your earthly blessings yeah. for heavenly consequences or maybe I could think of a better word there for heavenly matters, you know? Yeah. That's what I viewed the money is sort of a euphemism in that whole story about just worldly gain. I mean, what, cause you could put a lot of things in the context there. Uh, yeah. I told that illustration about, you know, the hearse, you don't see a hearse with a U haul right. vehicle, you know, use it for, godly things but you know actually i did see that one day and i was just i rolled down the window and was like no that's not gonna work you you can't (laughs) take it with you and other stories just in the last couple chapters about all these arguments about inheritance and even it's a it's an epidemic in our culture about people who die with a lot of money about then how that gets distributed And it's almost like some kind of curse that's passed on to each generation whereby delusionally you think that that money is going to give you security on earth, which always go back to, you know, our roots, which we didn't have any money based on 
a lot of reasons, but when you experience the joy that you have in Christ and you're, you're really poor from an earthly standpoint, it does put that in perspective. So I'm, I'm grateful for that mm -hmm. because then, you know, later we became famous. You put that in perspective. So passages like this mean a lot to me because you look at that as a trap. It, it's awesome. It's a blessing that you can it have things it and happened. help. Yeah, but if you put your security in that, it, it's just a lie. Yeah. But, you, but I mean, there, there's a reason you see all these Hollywood celebrities, you know, once they get to about 40, they start using a lot of money to try to keep their youthful look. And, you know, it, it's a it's a trap that they're just trying to follow that's going to end one day. Yeah. I mean, there's, at some point, there's nothing you can do. All the money's gone. All the looks are gone. And you're left with what? The resurrection without it. I, I can't imagine what a person would be thinking with no faith and at least the possibility that they could be raised from the dead. It's a story. It's really sad, it, it, which is oh. why we're getting, you know, to this. Then it, I mean, it looks it makes me look at it, you know, and you say, well, you're not woke. I said, well, I'm going to be awakened from the grave one day, so. But, yeah, we'll talk about that's woke. kind of the that's kind of the woke. I but like, you, know, you know, but yeah. you remember you remember when Jesus raised the uh, girl, you know, the the young girl, and he's like, "Wake up!" You know, a lot of people thought, "Well, what was she asleep?" I mean, maybe she wasn't dead. No, she was dead. Yeah. And, and the other uh, gospel records that, but he did it in a way like that's because how simple. She did wake up. Yeah, that's how simple it's going to be for the the person. Who has this kind of power? Yeah, it, it's a snap of the fingers. It's the twinkling of an eye, and even though you're dead, you can be awakened. I mean, you got to remember, we're talking about a person that visited our planet, who's eating fish on a creek bank after he was dead. Yeah, he's walking into walls, walking through walls with doors locked, but they're looking at him, and he's like, "I'm not a ghost. Grab a hold of me." Well, what? Right. Well, this they is killed what we're him. talking about. They killed him, and he woke up. <laughs> yeah. Well, look when you have, when you hold the power. <laughs> that there, that's the reason. I, if I'm not woke, I said, "Oh, I'm I'm woke." All right. But see, when you when you hold the power <laughs> over life and death, and you can bring people back from the dead, and you can be brought back from the dead, and be in a glorified body to live forever, things like money. And and possessions and somehow having everything right on this earth just begin to pale. They begin to kind of get in the rearview mirror, it's, and that's the whole point. Yeah. You made a really interesting point, Jace, earlier in Luke sixteen, and it really sets up where we're going to wind up today because the Pharisees had built their whole philosophy of money and wealth and possessions on how good they were, which, oh, exactly. which is exactly why Jesus went the route he did by saying, "Look." You've never understood the law and the prophets, or you wouldn't be the way you are, because God knows your heart. And that's why I use that illustration about marriage and divorce. They had they had a bad heart about the whole thing and a complete misunderstanding of possessions and money. And so they, their view was, if some poor, you know, sad sack ha, ha, didn't have anything, that's because he's a terrible person. I mean, that's how they build their yeah, whole thing. Yeah, and it's real interesting before Jesus tells this next story, you know, heaven and hell, which is, look, it's one of the most talked about parables mm -hmm. or story-like parable that you'll ever read. What's interesting is right before it in Luke's account, he actually singles out not the worldly people with money, but it's the Pharisees who love money. And, and then he does a contrast in their belief system because they would take some laws like the one of marriage and divorce, and then they watered that down yep. just because that it didn't fit what they wanted to do on this earth. Exactly. And then in other matters, they would go across the line and have all these amendments to the law of where you literally couldn't function without breaking a, some kind of rule. 
And so he, he brings that all out. that leads up to this this parable where there's a rich man and a, and a poor guy and they both face death. And so before I read that, though, I want to read this because I thought this was a good capper to get us ready. This is what Paul said in Philippians three. But think about the context of what I'm about to read with this idea we're talking about with the Pharisees and money and the ultimate choice of resurrection or heaven or hell. It says, uh, Paul said in uh, Philippians 3, 7, whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ, which is the way we should view anything towards possessions or money. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. There's the Pharisees and Paul was one, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead. I mean, so to me, that's just such the capping idea that Paul has to the Philippian church of exactly what we're talking about, about what really matters. He had versus, to die. He had to die. Alan. Yeah. Had, to, had die. to die. I mean, the, the price to be paid, he established. That's it. right. So, and, but you know, Al, even there, he went on to say in verse 18 that he said, I've often told you, I told you before, now say again, even with tears, you know, he, Paul was so passionate about this and, and the situation was so dire in this concept of putting your faith in things of the earth or looking beyond the earth. He says, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God, and this is little g, is their stomach. And and you say, what? I mean, they're they they want to eat high off the hog, thinking this is this is like the, the, the comforts of an earthly right. existence. And it says their glory is in their shame because they're doing things because of their power and who they think they are and their money that are shameful. But here's the key phrase. Their mind is on earthly things. Yep. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we'll, they'll be like his glorious body. No, that's good. The woke among us must... Pay attention to what you just read. Yep. Yeah, maybe they'll wake up. Maybe they'll wake yeah, up. Yeah, we got to wake up the woke. I'm super excited about one of our newer sponsors of the podcast, and that's Hillsdale College. Uh, I've heard about it before. I've heard it's a great uh, institution. know a few people um, on television that have graduated from there that really talk uh, well about it and, and say how much they learn there. And, you know, what I love is they're now offering an opportunity for just regular folks uh, to be able to go back and maybe learn some things that you never learned before. Uh, and it's free, which is fantastic. Uh, they offer more than 40 free online courses uh, in the most important enduring subjects. Uh, you can learn about the works of C.S. Lewis, which got my attention. Uh, Jace, I know you and Mia read some of C.S. Lewis re recently. I read Screwtape Letters again. Uh, recently as well. Just great stuff. Uh, so they also had the book of Genesis, uh, the, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution, the rise and fall of the Roman Republic. Lots of really great topics uh, that you're going to love. They have a sec seven lecture course on C.S. Lewis on Christianity, which is also really, really good. Uh, the course is uh, self-paced, so you can start whenever and wherever. Uh, you can enroll now in C.S. Lewis on Christianity to discover uh, Lewis's core lessons regarding truth and goodness for the Christian faith. So check them out. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash unashamed to enroll. There's no cost. Easy to get started. 
That's hillsdale.edu slash unashamed to register. Hillsdale.edu slash unashamed. So Jace is right. It puts it in a heavenly uh, context versus an earthly one. And so think about that when we, when I'm fixing to read this next story and we'll talk about it. Cause the first question is, is it a parable? Or is it real? Is he talking about somebody he knows? And we'll get into that. So this is Luke 16 verse 19. So now remember in the context that Luke puts, this is right into this whole discussion of, about the Pharisees and about, you know, how they view money and how they view things. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores, which in, you know, in a Jewish context to add that little caveat to the story um, would have been very abhorrent, you know, because that's just, you didn't do stuff like that. This this situation was bad. That's what Luke's trying to get across. Um, the time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, or Hades is another, which we'll get into that, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed so that so that those who want to go from here to you cannot. Nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, then I beg you, father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not come to this place of torment. Verse 29, Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Huh. So I don't know if there's any doubt that he's talking about himself, you know, in that little hint about, yeah. you know, that they're not listening to him either. So there's a lot to unpack. Um, for, I guess first of all, the first question is: is is Jesus given a um, actual something that's happened? Which some people believe that scholars are all over the place, Jace, when it comes to this text. But <laughs> oh, which we're gonna have fun with that. Not that this is a funny subject, because there's a lot of people out there who believe in God but don't believe in hell, right? Which is a little strange when you realize that you know who talked about hell more than any other person in the Bible? Jesus, I'm sure. It's Jesus. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you're like, I thought we were supposed to be motivated by God's grace. Well, you are. But I will agree with some of the scholars I read that you're really not going to appreciate the grace of God unless you understand that there's a hell. Yeah. And you're not going to understand the love of God. And so there's a, there's a lot of places uh, to go here. But I, I will say one thing, that, that people who wind up in hell, they're going to do it by their own accord. Because it's obvious that God does not want you there. Right. You know, even, even reading this story, I mean, it's not the narrative of here these people are in hell and they're like, oh, let me out. And God is like, no, you know, and they're like crawling, trying to crawl out. You notice the guy never even asked in the story to get out. Right. I mean, I think I would have at least said, hey, you know, how about letting me out of here? He, he was just not being rational uh, is an understatement because he was still functioning like Lazarus was his servant. 
hey, go tell him. He's still dictating policy. Yeah. And acting like, well, go get him, you know, get, get him to go tell my family, uh, get him to to dip my, dip, get, give me a drop of water. Well, what's a drop going to do? Nothing. Yeah. I mean, maybe five seconds of like, oh, now what? I mean, he's still not looking at this thing from the right perspective, which I think is Jesus' point. Uh, my my theory is, and this is just my opinion because I could be wrong if Jay said his shirt on, um, is that it is a parable just because the way Jesus frames some of it is there literally you're looking across and can see somebody. It just it seems like the concept of heaven and hell seems a lot bigger than what Jesus is describing here. He's just giving a little thumbnail because the point of the parable is to the audience he's speaking to is you need to listen to everybody that's pointed everything in history to me. And so, I mean, that's his point. That's what he's trying to make here. You don't want to be like, in the story. You want to be Lazarus. You don't want to be the rich guy it is the whole point. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's interesting to me is that he uses Abraham. You know, the Old Testament doesn't talk much about heaven at all. Um, it does talk about Sheol or, or this concept of hell. You do see that more in the Old Testament, but you don't see a lot about heaven. Most Jews just saw the idea of generations going forward is was their idea of heaven. I mean, I, I don't know that they had a concept, you know, of it at all. In fact, you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees even didn't agree on the resurrection. So there was a lot of interesting thing about the afterlife. But it's interesting that Jesus would bring Abraham into the topic or into the discussion, because what I guess he did understand, they understood, was that. Abraham was the before Judaism, before everything. He was the father of the faithful, the one who was called out. So they all agreed about Abraham. So I guess in their minds, they would have seen Abraham. If anybody would have made it, it would have been him. And so well, that's I why he used he, it. <laughs> he, was, he was subtly using that also because this is not a window into what his point was not, this is what heaven and hell That's is right. like. Now, most scholars, the reason they don't agree is because they go right. here to try to determine that. The window was about putting your faith in earthly wealth and power versus exactly. putting your faith but at this in point, Jesus. But well, I want to make this one point. Because a lot of people read this, the scholars, and say, well, if you're rich on earth— you're out yeah. because because basically the only accusation was there was a man who you know he lived in luxury and then you have this Lazarus who was a beggar, so they they're looking at it totally from social uh, issues. But look, Abraham, he was rich. Yeah. That's right. So uh, it's a subtle point yeah. that then Jesus used as an illustration that Abraham made it, but Abraham was one of the richest people in the Old Testament. He was. So, so what was the difference? Well, the difference was where he placed that value, like yep. what you read from Philippians 3, right. on where that's coming from. Who owns all this, and what are you to do about yep. it? This is God's. What was you going to say, Phil? I was going to say that we need to remember at this stage of the things that are going on that, that eternal life was still hidden via the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It was still that's a good hidden. point. This, well, he hadn't died and been buried right. and raised. Right. Yeah, that, he right. had predicted it, and now he's given, and this is, you're right, this is another claim that only the Son of God could pontificate on. That, that's right. Because he gives you a picture. So I always view this, because he uses a name. You know, people say, well, is this a parable or not? Because it's the only place if it is a parable, where a real name is used. Yep. Now, the rich man is just a rich man. But Lazarus, this beggar, he, he uses his name. Now, you, you want to hear my theory on I that, do. Al? Well, you remember when we were in Luke 10 and when Jesus sent out the 72 and he gave them this power and they got all excited that the demons were submitting to them in Jesus's name. And in verse 18, 
Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, which is another thing that only some supernatural being could say. Who was there? That's right. When, when did Satan fall like lightning from heaven? Well, it was a long time before this was written. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I think when he said that, I would have had to interrupt. <laughs> or is it, wait, well, well, we, let's back up to that part yeah. and tell me <laughs> more. But he goes on, and then he says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. But then he makes this statement. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Well, I, the reason I think he's using an actual name is because of this concept. Mm. Look, Al, right after I read that Philippians 3.20, our uh, citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a savior from there. Remember when we read yep. that? Well, look at chapter 4 of Philippians in verse 2, which is you, you don't really notice this verse, but it says he's he pleads with this person, you, you a dear, and I plead with Sintike Sintiki. to agree with each other. Yeah. Sintiki, okay, and the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, uh, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. You're like, why are you reading this, Jace? Watch, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. <laughs> so you're seeing a pattern develop here, which is why I think Jesus used a name in this illustration, parable, slash story, that if you wind up in hell, you know what? It's just another rich guy who was self-absorbed and thought it was all about this life. But that verse in John 10 where Jesus says he's our shepherd and he knows his sheep by name. Yeah. It, it's a, and you remember all the verses where he said, you know, will everybody say, on that day, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And and he's like, away from me, I never knew you. Yeah. And and I think it really highlights the relationship. Uh, even in the Philippians 3, it's not just about heaven. We're eagerly awaiting a Savior from there. And look, there's been more books written about what is heaven is going to be like, and but the Bible really doesn't go into a lot of detail no. because it's more about who's going to be there. And that's why we're Christ ambassadors as a purpose, because I'm like, you know, if I'm if I'm with Jesus forever and my main mission is to get, number one, my family there and to get other people, it, it, whatever we're fixed to do. And I've used this illustration many times when you go out, when you go on a trip, is it more important who's going or where you're going? I mean, I'll go with my wife anywhere. Yeah. Make the best of <laughs> You see what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's the way my wife is. It's like, hey, where are we going? Doesn't matter. Let's that's go. Why you can, Who's going? You can go to some fabulous place, but if you're not getting along with your wife the whole time you're there, probably not going to go very well, no matter how great the <laughs> exactly. place is. Well, it's the difference in a worldly mindset where these people in the world who don't know Jesus, they're thinking, oh, I want to travel the world and see it. And they're all by all these places. I'm like... I'm going to go anywhere with my wife and kids yeah. and my friends, and we're going to make it work. Right. I mean, some of the best times I had was some of the most terrible destinations. That's right. It became hilarious. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I really think that's the point of this. And I really think being self-absorbed is a, is a hidden point, and you see that in the attitude of the rich man. Yeah. And so what that all means that he gave him a name, I do think that it's not a coincidence that when he said, look, don't you get all excited about these miracles that I'm giving you the ability to do? Because by the way, what was Lazarus's, I mean, what was the rich man's appeal at the end? He basically wanted a miracle. Right. He said, well, I tell you what, let me come back. And, or, or let someone come back from the dead and, you know, I guess we, he didn't get that far in what he would say, but I guess, look out, you know, danger, don't come here. Well, what was he asked for? He's a miracle. Yeah. He was like, tell them how bad this is. 
And then Jesus is like, no, they're not going to listen, even if someone comes back from the dead. And that's why I always make this point that Jesus is better than miracles. And, and really, the motivation for turning your life to God is not hell. It'll get your attention. I remember at Young in the Faith, I used to be terrified. And that was one of my motivations for pursuing Jesus, because I was like, well, I don't want to go to hell. But then I realized that's not going to change your life. What's going to change your life is the grace of God and the love of Christ on why he suffered and basically paid our penalties, which would have sent us to hell right. to redeem us. And I think that's really the picture he's trying to say, that he's better than any kind of miracle. At this time frame, we're going to Jerusalem. He reminds him when, when by the time you get to Luke 18, we're going up to Jerusalem. Everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. Just think of that, all that information. He'll be handed over to the Gentiles. He was. They will mock him. They did. Insult him. They did. Spit on him. They did. Flog him and kill him. On the third day, he'll rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Now, just think about it as we go through the book of Luke. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. Yeah. I mean, when your audience has no idea what you're talking about, we, we, we tend to bypass that. Yeah. They just, these things are happening but, but God coming down out of heaven and a baby in a manger, it's, well, quite, think, the, it's yeah, quite the I story. I think he explained it so we would one day get it through their experience That's right. yeah. also. All right, yeah. so we're out of time. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick this discussion up in our overtime. If you want to follow us over there, blazetv.com slash unashamed is where we'll be. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.